Greetings and welcome to another episode of Nyamings with me, Crystal. Now today we're in nature's paradise, formerly Mineral in Cayman as St. Catherine. And I'm here to meet our guest for today. His name is Jeron Green. Now, I know Jeron from a day high school at Manchester High. And now he is a chef, owner of a catering company, world traveler, loves to travel, which means that whatever he prepares for me today is going to be testament to his world flavor. So I'm waiting to hear what that meal will be. Let's meet him and find out what he's going to be cooking for us today. Well, we're inside now and our guest has changed off, spruce up himself and is ready to perform for us in the kitchen. Now, where you first met us, I don't know if anybody had recognized, you must have recognized, the poco activity by the riverbank. You have your spirit in here, but we had some spirit out of door. <laughs> Are you familiar with any of those kinds of religious practices? Actually, yes. Uh, where I'm from up in Christiana, we have two, two poco churches, we call it very lively and well full of spirit literally <laughs> literally so whichever spirit we're lead with today we welcome it because <laughs> i trust from how things are laid out that we will be properly guided in the art of preparing the quinoa and the and the chicken breast so walk me through what we're going to do first and why we're starting this way all right so the first thing we're going to do is get this quinoa on on the fire it takes a little longer to cook than everything else that we're going to do I, my secret is that before I cook it, I like to toast it. Mm -hmm. It has little, this little bitter kind of taste. And I find that when you toast it, it gets rid of that taste completely. Okay, okay. And you know, so we're just going to put some olive oil, some butter in the pan, put it in, listen for like a popcorn kind of pop pop. And then we add some, some stock, either chicken stock, beef stock, but I'll use water okay. and good old salt. All right. Poor man stock. So let's get, let's get started with that then. All right. So the first thing we want to do, we want to add some extra virgin olive oil to this little skillet here. And then we're just going to add just a little cube of butter, probably about an ounce. The oil protects the butter from the heat of the pan. We don't want brown butter. We want it just to be all nice. So we're just going to allow that to melt. And remember, what we're doing is actually we're toasting the quinoa to get rid of that that very bitter, nutty taste that it has. So once the butter is all melted, we're just going to add our quinoa for toasting. Right away, you can already hear that popping sound that I was telling you about earlier. See? And it has this nutty flavor. It's a grain substitute for rice. You're watching that waistline. See it there? This is it. Water. All right, and then for, for taste, we're going to add some salt, garlic powder, and that will give it a very, very perfect, richy flavor. All right, so we're going to go with that. Make sure that everything is evenly distributed in that. So we're just going to cover that. We have the quinoa on the stove, and we're moving now to mastering the chicken breast, which feels really good under here. Is this how you bought it no. or is this all you? This is how I, well, I, how I treat with chicken. Chicken has this thing called salmonella. It can kill you. You have to be very careful how you treat it if you're not going to freeze it. So what I do, I'll wash it, dry it, wrap it in, and then you put it in the bottom of the, the, free, the fridge, not the freezer. Okay. So you can use it tomorrow or the day after, the last three days in your, in the cooling part of your fridge. I'm also looking at a very extensive wine and spirit collection yes, because it's not even just wine. How did we get here? Because this looks very, very esteemed and mature. <laughs> there was a little <laughs> space for all the wine here. But walk, walk me through all of what, it, what you have there because it's such a wide range. All right. I, I'm a lover of wine and it started probably a little over 10 years, 12 years ago. Um, we get a little bus. Mm -hmm. We have to travel our far in. <laughs> The truth is that the first place I ever went on a plane is Paris. Ooh. First place, yeah. Never traveled on a plane yet, and the first place was Paris. And I took every cent that they gave me. 
mm. and I bought one bottle of wine on my way back. Wow. And it's on number one, it's position on the shelf. And I've okay. said to myself over the years, when I graduated, you were the first time I was going to open it. Buy a new car, I'm going to open it. I get a master's, I'm going to open it. I keep yeah, shifting oh. the goalposts. And then I've collected several bottles since. The president of Chile, Gave brought you Chilean wine. wine? Yes, ma'am. No, that's not a drink. No, no, no. That's no, not a no. drink. And <laughs> then I think the most prized position, apart from the first, is a 42 years old bottle of wine that was given to me by a very old lady. Mm. 42 years. I think I have 38 years, 35 years, 30 years on the shelf. Nice. Yes. Nice. That's so we're, we're weaving this into today's meal at all, or it's just generally how you would prepare? I, I didn't types plant it, but guess what? <laughs> I <laughs> can toast a little red wine in it. I mean, especially since we're working with the cranberries. Of course, I can toast a little red wine and make it, you know? Oh. Zest it up. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have the chicken here now. Mm -hmm. Very well treated up to this point. Now we're going to chop him into pieces and put him on the fire. But <laughs> tell me what you do before that. All right. So, you know, we're Caribbean people. We like spice, we like flavors, we like mm -hmm. seasoning, all of that. So what we're going to do, I have here, this is like an all-purpose seasoning, but not the normal type. It has cilantro, it has garlic, it has onion, Ooh. it has parsley, it has lots of herbs and other spices mixed into it. And I find that this is the very best. All right, so first, and you see I've trimmed it and cut it. It looks clean, into, lean, yes. and ready to be cooked. So we're just going to add, you can call me seasoning bait. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and you can put copious amounts of seasoning all over it. Garlic powder. So we're creating like a little crust for it. Ah, uh, you can see it already. Yes. Then we have some cayenne pepper. And that's my heat. Oh yes. Are we not afraid of pepper? No, we're not. Jamaica. With the exception that it's not a scotch bonnet pepper powder that you just put on. Mm -hmm. All the other seasoning are really true to what grandma or mama would be using to prepare her chicken. Yeah, the truth is mm -hmm. I like to consider myself like a restaurant chef. Yes. You know, very cheap, so I invite my friends over. And we just, like this, this is one, two, that's seven people. And well, this is not even two grand. Well, put me upon the mailing list because I'm very able to take on this kind of meal. Most certainly. It's already done, the one yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next? All right, so after this, we're just going to add this to our skillet. Very hot with olive oil and butter. And you know, we're just going to get a sear on both sides and we're just going to pop it into the oven for maybe five minutes. Make sure that it's evenly cooked. Now we're going for a quick break. So when we get back, we'll see the well-graced and seasoned chicken breast hit that frying pan with olive oil and butter. Now we'll soon come back. Welcome back to Nyamings. You are still here with us inside the kitchen with Chef Geron, a.k.a. Geronimo, in Caymanas Country Club Estate, St. Catherine. Now, the quinoa is finished. It's done. And we're moving now into the chicken. Most certainly so, are. So how do we move now from paper to huh? pan? All right, so we're just going to lift it right here. We just bring it right over. All right, so we're going to do the same thing we did with the quinoa. The good old extra virgin olive oil, and that's just to protect this baby here, which is real butter, not margarine. This is butter. And real butter is way, way, way healthier than margarine. Our chicken right there inside. And remember, we just want to get a sear on these, flip all of these over, and as you'd realize, you have a very nice, perfect char on every single piece. The difference between searing something and frying is that frying, you want to immerse something in fat. Fat could be butter, fat could be cooking oil, whatever it is. And searing, you're just adding a little fat and then just getting a char, a crust on top of it, just lightly, no deep immersion, so that it can be cooked. In, in fat. Searing is just simple. Fat, little bit, and then just, you know, moving it around to ensure that you get a very nice crust. And then we're going to pop it into the oven for maybe about five to seven minutes so that we can ensure that it's evenly cooked. You don't want to have raw chicken. Just for about five to seven minutes. I've known Jaron since I was in high school and two things remain true about the man he was then and the man he has become. He has always been very 
animated and expressive, but also very explorative and curious, either about academics or in this instance, culture. And I think culinary arts now brings together his passion for drama and theatre and also the knowledge he has amassed through his own academic experience and seeing the world. So I'm happy to see how the meal is coming together to reflect all of those sensibilities that he carries. And I feel like Sema could do very, very well because it smells so good. Many things inspire me. I think chief among them is my mother. Every time I think I want to give up, if I undertake any sort of task at all, and I reach that point where I question how I'll move forward, I think of her. I think of the sacrifices that she made to ensure that I was able to make better for myself. And that gives me the inner drive. Cooking is a passion of mine. It's, it, it drives me. If I'm having a down day, I don't even really have to eat what I cook. I just need to cook, uh, take photographs of it. I'll post it on my social media pages and I'll just put it back in the pot and go, go to bed, literally. Now, what are we looking at? I'm peeping the cranberries. Oh, yes. What's this? All right. So this is a spicy cranberry compote. Okay. And a compote is any, any fruit, preserved fruit or whatever that you cook in syrup. Okay. So what I did, I added some cranberries, fresh cranberries to a, a, a saucepan. Then I added some sugar. And then the secret to this is that I added some Jamaican, some blended Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper to that baby there. I just allowed it to reduce. And when it's done, this is the result and it's a kick up. Yes, mm. like. No, he asked me earlier, do you like cranberries? I'm like, mm, no. no. Cranberries and scotchy, me death. Match made in heaven. <laughs> Delicious. Match made and the in kick of the, of the, the kick of the, the scotch bonnet. Yeah is more flavor than, than heat yeah. in this instance, yeah. which yeah. is good because we've already layered the chicken breast with the cayenne pepper. So we don't want to overdo it and then nobody can eat all. it. So I love the way you've balanced the flavors here. Very nice. What are we doing next? What are we doing with the chicken? All right, this so one? we have this here. We're just going to remove our chicken from <laughs> the oven, put it back on the stove top, mm -hmm. and then we're just going to layer this compote all over it. Okay. And we're just going to, not too long, maybe a minute and a half. We just want to coat it. We just want it to simmer a little bit mm -hmm. in it, and then, we're going to assemble our quinoa salad. We're going to put the quinoa salad on the plate, add some of our nice chicken covered with this compote, and then we're going to have some stirred fried veggies. Nice, nice. On the side. All right. So now that we have ensured that our chicken is evenly cooked, we're just going to add this spicy scotch bonnet compote right over our chicken breast. You know, we just want to get a nice little simmer there for a little. Adding just a little water for moisture at the bottom of the pan after we've added the compote. And we're just going to leave that there just to simmer for a little. Maybe add a little cover on top of that baby there. A little steam on it. And then we're going to head now to assemble our quinoa salad. All right, so we're going to assemble this quinoa salad. Very simple, nothing hard. There's, there we have dried cranberries. We have a little dressing that I've made. It's a chili, ginger, garlic. Dressing, we have a little uh, apple cider vinegar in that baby there. A few little spices. We have carrots and we have some green bell peppers, sweet pepper Jamaican people call it. We just want to julienne these bell peppers first, right there. Just chop these finely for a salad. The thing with quinoa is that it's very bland. It has a nutty flavor, but if you don't give it flavor, then it will taste kind of boring to everybody. So what you need to do is add your own flavors to it. We're going to add some bell peppers right in that. Then we're going to add some dried cranberries, since that is our theme, and I love cranberry very much. I said it's very good for you. And then we're going to shave some carrots here. Don't be afraid to add carrots, by the way. Very good for your eyes, among other things. Add it right in. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to add our dressing right over that baby there. I use the chunks of ginger and garlic there. Add just a little bit of salt to taste. All right, and then we just want to mix this all together. All right, and I can smell the divineness of this salad. Very nice. 
You can smell that garlic, the ginger, the tanginess of that dressing with the earthiness of the quinoa, the, the sweetness of the cranberries, and you know, the, just the, the very nice freshness of the bell peppers. I know many of you are wondering, uh, quinoa, you don't know what it is. Some people probably say it's expensive. It's not. And it's a very good substitute for rice and flour and all the things that we eat that, you know, having an impact on the waistline. Well, my waistline is okay, but I'm just saying for all our health conscious people, this is definitely it. Very low in carbs and it tastes very good if you add your own home flavors to it. So here we have it. This is a quinoa salad. Now our quinoa salad is ready and we've added some little extra heat to our pan-seared chicken breast with our cranberry compote. But I'm outside now just to have a separate conversation with you about the spirits that we met at the start of the program. Now by the river, cue any song that reminds you of it, we saw almost a baptismal exercise from the Poco Church. Geron did tell us that at his home, they're straddled by two churches in the community. You may have seen them, but what do you know about Poco? Take a look at our feature. Poco mania is an indigenous Jamaican religious practice that emerged from its African population during the mid to late 19th century. It was spawned from the much earlier Mayal practice known as Revival Zion, from which its close relative Zion also comes and pulls from Bible traditions along with African spiritualism. It is generally thought that the word Pocomania comes from the Spanish Pequeña Locura, meaning small madness. This is perhaps owing to some of the frantic dance moves and incantations that take place during Pocomania ceremonies. Indeed, dancing or trumping is essential to Pocomania worship as it serves to invoke the spirits to enter the ceremony. Oftentimes, it's accompanied by the playing of tambourines and cymbals as the gathered move around in a circle with backs bent and the feet stepping in a hypnotic and rhythmic pattern. Though women play an important role, the leader of the Pocomania group is always a man and he is referred to as the shepherd. Members of the group typically dress in white robes and wear multicolored head wraps of white, red, blue or green. They believe that the world of the dead and living are intertwined and both forces together move our universe. It's the vibrant hymns sung at Pocomania ceremonies that provide us today with that strong connection to our ancestors. I want to go to heaven when I die. Fi go here, Papa Dad and Look here. If it's one thing, don't make them full, them full white fool here, you know. Full of color, energy, and culture. And that's something we can proudly own as part of our heritage. No, just as colorful is the range of ingredients I'm seeing here for what is clearly our jinx for today. But what are we making? What are all of these things that I'm seeing? I said, I know them three here, but this is a mystery to me. All right. So, you know, I'm all Jamaican. Yes. And I'm for Jamaica. I support Jamaican, blended and made everything. Pineapples, the mm -hmm. sweetest pineapples you've ever tasted. This is the sugar loaf? Taste. No, man, this is a oh, better than sugar loaf. Oh, but look how yellow that is. This is grown in St. Mary. I want you to taste that. All right. Here we go. Absolutely amazing. The sweetest mm -hmm. pineapple you will ever have in your life. Grown here in Jamaica. Is, a, is one person you get it from? <laughs> I wonder. Or is that Parish? Look at Come I going to need a link. Oh, yeah, man, them poor sugar, right? All right, so we have pineapple, mango, yeah. cherry. Yes, well, that not really grow here. Yeah, somewhere. no, no, you understand. Understand. We, understand. Have, we have two different types of syrups today. Mm -hmm. We have some agave over there, mm -hmm. and then we have some simple syrup right there. Mm -hmm. Then we have some orange juice. This is some strawberry extract, concentrate, 
And then we have a blended ginger and lime juice. Is that a home blend? Oh gosh, man. Most certainly, it has to be from the home. All right. Now, before you tell me where am I going to make, we're going to go for a break and keep you in suspense a little bit longer. Now, I'm going to soon come back. Welcome back to Nyamings. Today we are in Caymanas Country Club Estate with Jeron and he's moving us with song and food. No, still here, about to do our juice prep and I'm looking at pine. What's the name of the drink that you're going to be making? We'll call it a Geronimo's Daiquiri. Hello! Yeah. <laughs> Alright, walk me through your procedure. What do we do first, All second, right. third? So we have our pineapple. Julie mangoes from Jamaica, very beefy and mm -hmm. meaty. So we're adding our little ingredients one by one with some simple syrup, right there, and that's just for the sweetness. Mm -hmm. Some agave syrup for that flavor, and this agave is the, the thing that they use to make tequila. Okay. And agave syrup doesn't have any alcohol in it. Okay. You just have the flavor, okay. but no alcohol. And then some strawberry concentrate there. Ooh. Orange juice for that <laughs> tanginess. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to add this lime ginger extract right inside. And then some ice right there. Pack and this in. is your unique creation. Oh gosh, man. Straight from Geronimo's kitchen. Crush that up. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that's it? That's it. Time to eat? <laughs> Definitely. Now that our meal is ready, I am excited to hear you introduce what I'm having. Oh, We're going to have the Geronimo daiquiri at the end. Yes, but is there a name for this meal? And we've now introduced some wine. What's the value? All right, most certainly. All right, so on your plate, you have a quinoa, a warm quinoa salad mm -hmm. that we've made with dried cranberries, shaved carrots, and a very nice gingery, garlicky home dressing. Then we have a pan seared piece of chicken breast, mm -hmm. and we've Top that with a cranberry spicy scotch bonnet, cranberry compote, and I give a little bell pepper on top there. Just, All right. just for, for garnishing. They say, they say we eat with our eyes yes, first, yes. so that will look good. And then you have just a little sauteed broccoli and snow peas, carrots, all from Jamaica. Now, usually they say you eat, uh, when you, you're having white meat, you have white meat with a glass of white wine. But as I tell you before, not in my house. Mm -hmm. My house, we drink what we feel like drinking. But this is a very nice fruity California red. Well, I'm looking forward to it because already I'm seeing the cohesion between the different elements of the meal. Fruit, fruit, fruit. So, jumping right in there. Same. First up is our warmed quinoa salad. Mmm. Tastes like rice. Very, very have quinoa tasting like rice because we tend to do it cold and tastes like you're punishing yourself if it's not flavored correctly. Mm -hmm. So by adding your cranberries in there, we've gotten a hint of sweet and of course the sauce kind of brings it together in a very creamy um, and textured way. Now I'm jumping into my chicken breast. So pan seared and then oven baked. I expect that means a lot of the juices are still retained and we didn't cook it down for all the sauce to drop off of it. All the seasonings are to drop off of it. Mmm. <laughs> Bam! Smoky. Savory. Warm. Like so it's it. not it's not too hot. If you don't have the countenance to manage a lot of pepper, but you'd want some warmth, we're gonna call it that in the food. Mm -hmm. I love what you've done with the cayenne pepper Thank and you. of course topped it off with a sweet and savory um, cranberry compote. Thank you. You'll see too that it's colorful and well placed and properly aligned to get you all the right elements from your protein um, to your vegetables. Lightly cooked, mm -hmm. still very crunchy and seasoned to perfection oh gosh, with that mix of olive, olive oil and butter. Delicious. I'm going to top it off now with my fruity wine. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. Nice, light, and dinner appropriate. Love it. Mm -hmm. Jeron, hats off to the work that you have done in the kitchen today. A beautiful meal, well aligned, well flavored, and I think it does justice to the experience that you've garnered from traveling the world, seeing and tasting how people pull flavors together. And I must laud you, sir, for keeping the Jamaican essence in there. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Well done. Mm -hmm. Mm. The agave, 
certainly adding a lot of texture to what is what you would probably call a, a blended fruit punch but it's very well flavored well, we've made it to the end of another beautiful episode. We started off Sorry. out by Nature's Paradise to the paradise that is Geronimo's kitchen. Right. Until we see you again, continue experimenting in the kitchen. Drink your red wine with your white meat. Yes. <laughs> Go on, eat our food. Cheers. Cheers.